Hi again. Uh, so this is the next uh, video where I'm covering my book. And uh, in this chapter, we will talk about the two uh, types of Kazakh bow uh, that I described in my book. And uh, I refer to them as lesser Kazakh horse bow and the large Kazakh horse bow. And now, um, when my first book came out, uh, which is this one, I got a lot of criticism for using these terms uh, from the local uh, archery community, and uh, it was uh, it was uh, kind of well deserved in in a certain way because what I reserve, uh, refer to as the lesser Kazakh bow is known as the Crimean Tatar horse bow. Uh, and everybody used this term. And what I refer to as a uh, large Kazakh horse bow is known as Manchu horse bow. And I got bashed for, for using these kind of terms. But uh, I still decided to keep it when I was preparing my second uh, edition, English only. And uh, here is why I'll try to explain. Uh, the thing is, uh, the Crimean Tatar bow, the so-called Crimean Tatar bow, uh, which uh, of course you know is very similar to Turkish bow, except for it's probably slightly larger and it has this uh, curvature at the um, at the uh, handle section while in Turkish bows it's straight uh, in Tatar Mong or in Crimean Tatar, Tatar it has slight curvature and that's basically the only significant difference because otherwise it's the same uh, structure it's the same functionality it has the Kassan eye it has a small uh, little string bridge uh, practically identical, just slight, slight differences. Now, uh, why I still kept the name the large horse bow, uh, the, the lesser Kazakh horse bow in my book is because I think the Crimean Tatar bow name is not correct. It doesn't make sense to me because uh, Crimean Tatars are just a tiny, tiny speckle of the uh, Eurasian nomadic realm that used the same exact type of bow uh, at that same period. Uh, the Bashkirs used it, the Kazakhs used it. Uh, probably when the uh, uh, when the uh, when the Jungars migrated to Kalmykia uh, uh, in in modern day. Kalmykia, Volga River, they probably switched to it too. I, I, I don't have that information, but I assume that they adopted it too. So, and probably the Turkmens used it, the Central Asian states used it. So, uh, it, you know, to call something that was used so widely by the name of just one location, I just don't think it's... Um, it's correct and it's it's kind of like it's one of those Euro, Europa Eurocentric uh, uh, perspectives it's just like uh, same way that all nomads received the name of Tatars because they've known this uh, uh, on the they, they were bordering with Tatars and they assume that all nomadic people, all, all, all peoples who live in, in, in felt houses, in yurts, were the Tatars. Because they've known this particular tribe of Tatars and they just use the name for, for, for all of the tribes. Same situation here. Uh, they noticed that Crimean Tatars used this kind of bow. And they gave this type of bow this name. And they didn't see that behind the Crimean Tatars, there was the entire huge area 
where the same exact type of bow was used. And the, the analogy I use to kind of explain why this doesn't make sense to me is imagine if somebody saw an apple up close and this person would say, oh, it's an apple. Certainly, I have absolutely no uh, doubt that this is an apple. But if the same person would zoom out of this apple, this person would see that it's actually not an apple, but it, but in a tree, apple, uh, an apple tree, and there are many, many other apples, the same exact apples hanging on this tree, and that this is not an apple, it's a tree of apples. So, kind of same situation happened here, and I think that uh, we use this kind of bow. The Bashkirs used it. The, the No guys used it. Kalmax most likely used it. Why should we call it Crimean Tatar? It just doesn't make sense to me. There has to be some other name. And because I am, uh, I decided to be, you know, uh, Kazakh centric in this case. I kept the name. I refer to it as a lesser Kazakh horsebow. But I put uh, in parentheses of. Crime and Tatar type, just to kind of honor the the the, the, the tradition, uh, the name that kind of stuck with this type of bow. And same goes to um, the large Kazakh horse bow, which is exactly like uh, uh, the Manchu horse bow, because at that point the Kazakhs started adopting it because they were fighting after the fall of the um, of the uh, uh, Jungar state Jungar Hanate. Uh, suddenly the border line with, with Manchu Empire uh, approached the Kazakh Hanate. Uh, we, we became immediate neighbors with the um, Manchu uh, Empire and we started fighting with them and obviously adopting this new um, and the latest actually uh, horse bow type in this region. That's where the evolution stopped because they discontinued using it afterwards. And again, um, uh, everybody referred to it as a Manchu type because supposedly the Manchu invented it. But in my Kazakh centric or nomadic centric view, I think all the nations that used it can claim it as their own because it was used in Central Asia. We have these uh, perfect uh, images of a very shagin artist uh, he he was a period artist of incredible detail uh, depth his paintings and he, he paints central asian artists uh, archers with manchu type bow and you can't be mistaken it's it's the same exact bow you know the distinctive uh, string bridges the shape the size of it you cannot be mistaken and it was used in Central Asia, and it was produced in Central Asia because, and in Kazakh uh, Khanate, because we have the records of it that the Kazakhs uh, used to both import and make their own bows of both types, of the of the Crimean, the so-called Crimean Tatar, and the so-called Manchu type. So, you know, uh, I understand it's easier to use these uh, terms, but they don't make sense to me. So I kind of <laughs> decided to stick uh, with the uh, Kazakh centric or steppe centric, nomadic centric terms. And I use uh, lesser Kazakh horsebow and large Kazakh horsebow. Now, uh, obviously in terms of design, they're exactly like uh, these uh, two other types of bow, Crimean Tatar and um, Manchu. The biggest difference probably comes from the uh, the distinctive design of quiver and uh, bow holster because that appears to be different from Crimean Tatar, Turkish. I mean the principle is still the same, uh, the suspension system, everything, the use of it is exactly the same, but the design the patterns, uh, the, 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 the leather work is different, it's distinctive. And uh, as of today, as of our today's knowledge, Kazakh and Bashkir both uh, as part of lesser Kazakh 
horse bow family or it could be also called uh, Bashkir bow. They are very close, they are identical, Bashkir and, and, and Kazakh. And also uh, the, the, uh, the so-called Manchu type bow or larger, large Kazakh horse bow is exactly same as in uh, Mongol horse bow, the one, the new Mongol horse bow that is used today in Mongolia and like I said in Central Asia. So these are the two types of bow that Kazakh used. Kazakhs used uh, based on historical evidence, based on archaeology, based on museum samples and uh, depictions and etc. And again, I, I described them a little bit more in detail in my book, but we're not going to get further than that because we have to move to the next sec section. Thank you for staying with me. Uh, there will be more in the next videos. Thank you.